Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be bringing down Mike Kosicki's 2021 NFL tape um, for the Miami Dolphins. And we're going to kind of be just breaking down why the Dolphins should re-sign him. Obviously, he's an upcoming free agent and why they should re-sign him. Anyway, before we get started, though, please drop a quick like and a sub on today's video. That would really help my channel grow. I'd really appreciate that. With that said, let's dive right into the video, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So Mike Kosicki is the best tight end on the market uh, this offseason. Um, and, you know, he's he had a really productive season for the Miami Dolphins. Com contract year showed up when he had to. Um, the former, you know, player out of Penn State had a really, really good year. I mean, 73 catches, 780 yards, two touchdowns, which was um, a down uh, turn from 2020 when he had six touchdowns, a career-high six touchdowns. Uh, but he 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 was a big big deal for this Dolphins team. Uh, was number two in receptions behind Jalen Waddle, who had over a hundred. Uh, but you know, because he was the real deal. And let's dive into a film session, really break down why the Dolphins need to keep him around. So for his side, I mean for I mean for his size, Kosicki is a really rare skill set. I mean he's really long, tall, big, strong, and athletic. But he's got speed and he can run and make plays after the catch he's a really good pass catching tight end not so much in the run blocking game that's why the Dolphins really typically have Adam Shaheen out there too they also have Durham Smythe who's a much better run blocker uh, number 81 for the Dolphins uh, on the roster but you know this Dolphins tight end room is solid but Gasicki is is the pass catcher but he he is so integral to this Dolphins passing game and right here is a play why you know you're backed up in your own uh 10 yard line it's first and 10 uh you're down four with 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter against Jacksonville. Dolphins ended up losing this game. If they won this game, they were in the playoffs. You know, it's 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 heartbreaking. And, you know, they, then they lose uh, the week after against the Falcons and another, you know, field goal loss. So, anyway, Gasicki here, right here, he's going to run right through the middle of the defense and run that, uh, that in-breaking route. I was about to say that's an out route. That's not an out route. Uh, he's on the left side of the field, and he's going towards the right. So, that's an in-breaking in, in route. Um... You're just going to see what he's able to do after the catch. He's also a quarterback's best friend. He's so big, um, and he's such a big target. But look how he just moves through the heart of this defense. And this is what I love about tight ends. Smart tight ends and good pass catching tight ends know the holes in the defense. And that's exactly what Gasicki does. Look at Tua here. Just scan the field. Step up in the pocket. But just look how Gasicki has found the hole in the defense. That's one, two, three, four, five defenders. And you know where Gasicki is? Right in the middle of all of them. Catches that ball in perfect stride, is able to turn up field, and just look at him after the catch. This guy is super athletic, as I said. He played basketball in high school. Um, honestly, probably could have played basketball in college. Not for Penn State, because uh, Penn State's pretty good at basketball. But at the same time, um, you know, he's an athletic guy, and he's really good after the catch. But that's kind of what Gasicki's skill set is. Big, tough, physical uh, go-getter of a tight end who can make plays after the catch. Look at him here making this catch. Uh, for the Dolphins, picking up, you know, 20 yards, but it's more the yards after catch ability that really comes off the, the tape here for me against the Jags. And this is a little bit more of what Gesicki needed to do last year, but it's still something he can do, and it's something that he just wasn't targeted enough uh, to do. He, once again, he only had two touchdowns. Anyway, he needs to be the big red zone guy for the Dolphins, but he can absolutely be that. I mean, if you have Gesicki and Devontae Parker um, with Jalen Waddle out there, I mean, that that's a scary red zone crew. But anyway, Gesicki right here, it's going to be one-on-one, uh, as you see, this is one on one across the board, but it's going to be Gasicki one on one here, and Gasicki's going to kind of just run this route to the back corner of the end zone, trying to get that positioning, that inside leverage, that ability to go up and get catch the ball. And that's exactly what he does. I mean, the the pass here from Tua is really really well done. It's 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 a perfect ball here, but Tua knows that Gasicki is, is is his second best 50 50 jump ball catcher. So that means, and even then, he's an above average. Uh, guy to go up and catch a football. Devontae Parker is elite in that regard. Gasicki's really good, though. Um, so Gasicki right here, just look how Tua kind of lofts that one up there. Gasicki turns back for it, knows the ball's already in the air, and just look at how he uses his length and his arms to go up and grab that. High points that, that ball way above those two defenders. I mean, this guy is getting double teamed right now. He's being harassed for this football, but he simply keeps his arms up, comes in with a catch for the touchdown. That's a massive play. Uh, you know, right there, trying to get his team back in the game, right? Down, down with five minutes left in the third quarter, down by 13, makes this a one possession game. Really good throw by Tua, just, you know, waiting for, for you know, Gasicki to, at, just at the top of his route, to get past his defender, just floating that ball up there. But this is kind of just the athletic player that Gasicki is able to go up and make these plays in the end zone, like the modern NFL tight end should. Really, really nice play by Gasicki. And you might think that Gasicki is just the guy that's on those short, intermediate passing routes. Maybe, 
uh, you know, those, those 10, 12, 15 yard plays, but Kasicki can also run the deep routes and he can run the deep routes effectively because of his size and the fact that he's going up against linebackers half the time. Uh, right here, you're going to see him matched up one-on-one, -on -one, and all he's going to do is he's going to run that route, uh, that post route towards the middle of the field. That's all he's going to do, right? He's just trying to get in behind this defense. It's main coverage everywhere, and he's just going to beat his man. Pressure pressure in his face. Tua steps up. Really good pocket presence from him. Tua, you know, really showed off that pocket presence. But anyway, Tua on the run, moving to his right, just lofting this ball up to Gasicki once again. Just look how Gasicki evades defenders, gets away from guys. He's created some separation um, against, uh, you know, man coverage and just yards after catch for him. If that's the name of the game for the tight end position. Kasiki can do that. He can also catch the deep ball right here. As you see, he can get outside the numbers, make those throws, get the, get the yards after the catch, go through contact for, for, the, for the extra yards. This is just a really good route, especially to get away from, from his defender, get into the open spot of the field. And as I said, good tight ends in the NFL, they find the open places in the field. You see it's in between these two defenders towards the outside of the field. He uses his body to protect the football makes the play runs after the catch like just this is a fantastic play from Gasicki this is just part of uh what he can do for this Dolphins offense but if I had to be completely honest the reason that Mike Gasicki needs to be re-signed um for the Miami Dolphins is um the fact that he is a perfect fit and when I mean perfect fit I mean perfect fit for the Dolphins run pass option offense and that's what they're gonna run right that's what two is really good with and comfortable with and they're gonna run some sort of uh, passing game, running game combination. If it's through the RPO, if it's not if it's through heavy play action, it doesn't matter. It's the same sort of concept. But on this play, they're going to have the two tight end set here. And the Dolphins really like to utilize the two tight end set. They used it more than any other team in the NFL. Um, and it has had success previously in other teams. I mean, remember when the Philadelphia Eagles went to the Super Bowl a couple of years back, you heavily utilizing that two tight end set. They had Trey Burton out there. Uh, they had Zach Ertz, obviously. But in this situation here, you're going to have Gesicki coming this way, and you're going to have the backup tight end and Adam Shaheen going that way. And that's kind of the play. Once again, it's an RPO play. It's all in the decision-making. It's all Tua reading these linebackers and these defenders, seeing if they bite. And if they bite, then Tua just throws it in the flat, and then there's so much empty space out here for one of the tight ends to run. But this is exactly why Gesicki is so perfect for this offense, because he's a yards-after-catch tight end that can run, and more importantly, big frame, big size, athletic tight end. But just here, look at this. These linebackers all all come down, and this corner over here is just watching to his eyes. And what that means is that as Tua moves that way, as Tua moves this way outside the pocket, and Gasicki's in the flat, he's wide open on second and seven. That's not even e even an easy uh, first down. But just look at the burst and the, the acceleration after the catch in open space. He's really hard to bring down. He's able to accelerate, picks up an extra 15 yards or so, um, getting the Dolphins to midfield, or around midfield rather. But this is just a good play from Mike Kosicki, and he can turn a simple pass in the flat into big yardage because he's fast, he's quick, especially for his size, and he's hard to bring down. So talking about Kosicki being perfect for this offense, this play is, I think, the best play the entire season to prove why Gasicki is so integral to this offense. And, you know, this play is the Dolphins' base offense in 2021-2022, and it's exactly Tua Tunga by Lowe's bread and butter. It's the RPO game. Um, that's as simple as it gets here. Kosicki's going to be running that quick slant route uh, right here and the idea of this play is basically you fake the run or you run the ball and it depends on these linebackers here if these linebackers come up then you throw the ball over the top of the linebackers because these linebackers have left that space which means that all this area of the field is wide open and Gesicki's running right into them that's kind of the idea of the play and if these linebackers are like hey we've seen this before we're going to back off then you run up the run the ball up the middle for a small gain of three or four yards that's kind of the idea of the play okay so on this play here you know, uh, the linebackers are going to bite. They're going to come down. And Tua simply reads that. Tua reads that. Um, and he sees that these linebackers have been come come down, which means that space over the top for him to throw into is wide open. And Gesicki, with his attributes and his size, his skill set, his speed, and his yards after catch ability, and his quickness in open space, sees that, recognizes that, catches that ball, picks up the first down. That's an easy first down. It's the easiest way to move the chains uh, for Gesicki. Um, it's a really fantastic play there. And that's all. That's exactly what it's all about for Gasicki. It's just that quick slant route. He's so quick. He's a really good route runner for his size and for a tight end. Finds the open spaces in the field. He's a quarterback's best friend. And with his frame and his skill set, that is what he brings to this offense. He brings that first down mentality. He brings that guy who can pick up the chains um, on first down, on second down, on third down. He's a, he's a guy to really target with the football. And that's why the Dolphins really need to keep him around. So when you look at tight end numbers um, across the league, I mean, Mike Kosicki was in the top in, in, in the top couple 
of tight ends. I mean, he had 73 catches, 780 yards, two touchdowns. Sure, that they def- the Dolphins definitely want to see more. But the real thing that really concerns me about keeping Gesicki uh, around for the long run is the price tag because he's going to want upwards of $14, $15 million. That's what he's going to want because the best tight ends in the league, that's what they're earning. That's what they should be making uh, because they're, they're, they're guys that can really go out there um, and block and catch. The one issue with that for me, though, is Kosicki really isn't a blocker. But at the same time, he's not a Travis Kelsey, so he shouldn't be earning as much as Travis Kelsey. He's not George Kittle either. He's not Mark Andrews. He's, he shouldn't be in that range of players. He's, he's, he's a tier or two below them. However, at the same time, he's still a massive part of this offense, and he's a perfect fit. Reasons being that um, his frame and his size um, allow him to be a really versatile weapon in this offense and a guy who can be really productive yards after the catch, which is perfect for the type of offense uh, that the Dolphins are going to want to run next year, uh, trying to keep uh, in line with Tua's skill sets, with his decision-making and his ability to really work the RPO game. So with that said, I think if they can get Kosicki on a, on a, on a long-term deal closer to 11 to 12 million rather than 13 14 15 then they should definitely keep him around but if you're paying Gasicki more than 14 million dollars over more than four years I'm gonna get scared because I think Gasicki on a four-year maybe 44 million dollar deal that's perfect that's exactly where the Dolphins want him I think in in reality it's gonna be closer to four years 50 million um, or three years 40 or something like that but at the same time, you really got to watch the price tag with Kasiki because I don't think he's worth 14, 15, or 16. He's worth much closer to 11, 12, or 13. But with that said, the Dolphins should definitely try and keep him around. He's a fantastic piece to this offense. And with that said, that's pretty much going to end the video for today. Did you agree with my analysis? Why or why not? Leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you're new around here, please drop a like and a sub on today's video. I'd really appreciate that. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see ya.